Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel, Introduction to Research Designs. Have you ever pondered why research designs hold such paramount importance in the field of psychology? Imagine you're an architect, gearing up to construct a building. You wouldn't start laying bricks without a blueprint, would you? In the realm of psychological research, research designs are that blueprint. They are the detailed plans that guide how a study is to be conducted providing a systematic approach to understanding the human psyche. At its core, a research design is a strategic plan that integrates different components of a study in a coherent and logical way. It ensures that the data collected aligns with the research objectives and can answer the research question accurately. In psychology, research designs are invaluable. They set the parameters for a study, determining how data will be collected analyzed and interpreted. This includes everything from outlining the study's scope and identifying the variables to deciding the methods of data collection and analysis. Let's say you're investigating the impact of stress on memory. Your research design would dictate whether you conduct a lab experiment, a field study, or use existing data. It would define how you measure stress and memory and how you control for other factors that could influence the results. Without a solid research design, your study could end up like a house built on shaky foundations, no matter how intriguing the research question. Moreover, research designs also ensure the reliability and validity of a study. Reliability refers to the consistency of the research study's results, while validity is about the accuracy of the findings. Without these, the results of a study would be questionable, at best. In essence, the right research design is like a compass, guiding researchers through the complex maze of psychological research and leading them to meaningful insights about the human mind. So whether you're exploring the intricacies of human behavior, the complexities of cognitive processes, or the dynamics of social interactions, a well-crafted research design is your starting point. Understanding the basics of research designs is the first step in conducting meaningful psychological research approaches to research designs. So, what approaches can we take to devise a research design in psychology? Well, there are several routes we could take, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Let's delve into three main approaches, descriptive, correlational, and experimental. Firstly, we have the descriptive approach. This is a method where researchers observe and record behaviors without manipulating variables or conditions. It's like being a fly on the wall, quietly observing the world as it is, without interfering. This approach is particularly useful when we want to describe behaviors as they naturally occur. For instance, a psychologist might use a descriptive approach to study how children interact on a playground. Next up, we have the correlational approach. Here, researchers examine the relationships between variables. They're not just observing behaviors, they're looking to see if changes in one variable correspond with changes in another. For example, a psychologist might use a correlational approach to investigate if there's a relationship between stress levels and sleep quality. Lastly, let's talk about the experimental approach. This is where psychologists manipulate one or more variables to determine their effect on other variables. It's a cause and effect kind of deal. For example, a psychologist might use an experimental approach to test whether exposure to violent video games increases aggressive behavior. Each of these approaches serves a unique purpose and is chosen based on the research question at hand. The descriptive approach is great for just observing and describing behaviors. The correlational approach is perfect for studying relationships between variables. And the experimental approach is ideal when we want to identify cause and effect relationships. So, the approach we choose to our research design in psychology is not a one-size-fits-all decision. It depends on what we're trying to find out and the nature of the variables we're working with. It's like choosing the right tool for the job, and in research, the right tool can make all the difference. Choosing the right approach can significantly influence the outcomes of the research. Experimental Designs Now, let's dive deep into the world of experimental designs, an integral part of psychological research. Experimental designs are like the backbone of psychology, providing a solid structure for conducting research. They're unique and quite distinct from other research designs, and here's why. Imagine you're a detective trying to solve a mystery. 
You have a hunch about the culprit, but you need solid evidence. That's where experimental designs come in. They're the tools that allow researchers, much like detectives, to establish a cause and effect relationship between variables. These designs give you the power to control and manipulate certain factors, enabling you to isolate the effects of one variable on another. For instance, let's consider a classic example from the realm of psychology. The impact of sleep deprivation on cognitive performance. With an experimental design, you take two groups of people. One group would be allowed to sleep normally, while the other would be deprived of sleep. Then, you'd measure their cognitive performance. The controlled manipulation of sleep allows you to see its direct effect on cognitive ability. But why experimental designs, you might ask? Well, they bring to the table an element of certainty that other designs might not. By manipulating one variable and observing its effect on another, you're able to draw definitive conclusions about cause and effect. This is a stark contrast to observational methods, where you might observe a correlation, but not necessarily a causation. However, it's important to remember that with great power comes great responsibility. When using experimental designs, it's crucial to ensure that the experiment is ethically sound and that the results are not influenced by bias or confounding variables. Only then can the true power of experimental designs be fully utilized. So in the grand scheme of psychological research, experimental designs are the heavyweight champions. They allow you to control the ring, dictate the pace, and ultimately deliver the knockout punch of definitive conclusions. Experimental designs enable researchers to draw definitive conclusions, hence their wide usage in psychology. Types of research designs. With a myriad of research questions in psychology, how do we know which type of research design to use? Well, let's dive into that question. Research designs are like the blueprints for your research project. They outline how you're going to collect and analyze your data. They are crucial for ensuring that your study is valid, reliable, and ethical. But with a variety of designs to choose from, how do you decide which one to use? Well, let's explore some of the most common types of research designs in psychology. First, we have case studies. These are in-depth explorations of a single individual, group, or event. They allow researchers to gather detailed and rich data about a specific phenomenon but they can sometimes be hard to generalize to larger populations due to their focus on a single case. Next up, we have longitudinal studies. These involve repeated observations of the same variables over long periods of time. This type of research design is excellent for studying developmental trends and changes over time. However, they can be time-consuming and expensive. Then, we have cross-sectional studies. These involve looking at different groups of people at one specific point in time. They are helpful for comparing different populations or age groups, but they can't capture changes over time. Other types of research designs include correlational studies, which look at the relationship between two or more variables. Experimental designs, which manipulate variables to determine cause and effect. And observational studies, where researchers observe and record behavior without interfering. The nature of your research question often dictates the type of design you'll use. For instance, if you're interested in the development of a certain trait over time, a longitudinal study might be your best bet. On the other hand, if you're looking at the relationship between two variables, a correlational study might be more appropriate. The type of research design selected can significantly impact the quality and findings of the research. So selecting the right design for your research question is not just important, it's essential. Key points about research designs. So what are the key takeaways about research designs in psychology? Let's rewind a bit and bring together all the bits and pieces we've been discussing. Research designs, in essence, are the blueprints of any psychological study. They are the step-by-step -step plans that guide researchers in how to collect, analyze, and interpret data. Without a solid research design, any study would be like a ship without a rudder aimlessly wandering in the sea of data. Now there are multiple approaches to research designs, each having its own strengths and weaknesses. The choice of approach largely depends on the nature of the research question and the resources available. Descriptive designs, for instance, are great for exploratory studies, giving us a broad overview of a phenomenon. On the other hand, 
Correlational designs help us understand the relationships between variables, whereas experimental designs allow us to establish cause and effect relationships. Speaking of experimental designs, they hold a special place in psychological research. With their ability to manipulate variables and control for confounding factors, experimental designs provide a powerful tool for testing hypotheses and drawing conclusions. They come in different flavors, from true experiments with random assignments to quasi-experiments and pre-experimental designs. Each type has its own applicability and limitations, and the choice often comes down to ethical considerations and practical constraints. And of course, we cannot overlook the wide array of specific types of research designs, each tailored for different research needs. From cross-sectional studies that capture a snapshot in time, to longitudinal studies that track changes over time, and case studies that delve deep into a single case, the options are plenty. In conclusion, research designs are indispensable in psychology. They lend credibility to research, ensure the validity of findings, and guide the way towards new discoveries. A research design is not just a plan, it's a strategic roadmap, steering the research towards its goal. Remember, a well-crafted research design is the foundation of any successful psychological research. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.